Hello, hello everyone. I am Darkness and welcome back to White Day, a labyrinth named School, where I am now finally able to backtrack and I'm trying to make my way downtown. Uh, actually, I'm trying to make my way back through all the places that I could possibly find something to be able to do uh, with the items I've collected as I've moved forward. Now, I need weights, I need to explore this school, and I need to probably explore it a little bit more thoroughly now that I know I'm going to have all the items needed to be able to look through every single room and find every single thing. First place I'm doing is this, and the first thing I realized in looking at this is that this is going to be the code to that principal's office thing. So, and as we both see, absolutely. Oof. Um, it's hard to, okay, the, so, so it's a C, is it, it's the C thing going as one of them. We gotta find, okay, there's something else I see marked. Alright, that symbol. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, forgot about him. Uh-oh. Turn off the light. Okay. Can I do this with... Uh, yes, I can. Okay. It's just going to be indefinitely harder to do this like this. All right. Um, a two. Right? Okay, two. Now we just need a shape. So there's a shape somewhere down there that should be circled or something. Um, there it is. It's a butterfly. All right. Butterfly. So I've got the code to the principal's office now, I think. So what else can I solve with the items I have? Um, I've got... I got the keys. Okay, I've got... Yes, those ocular devices have been placed in there now, so I shouldn't have them in my inventory anymore. Um... I don't quite know. I don't quite know what to do with the rest. We're going to try. Um. All right. It's now. Now it's just time to go. Go back. Uh, and try to see if we can find a metronome, if we can uh, unlock some doors, and if we can combine some keys and see if that does anything. The small key red, small key yellow, small key blue. They can be combined, they can do things. Oh, and I need to find weights. Oh, that's where it is. And, God, I've got a lot to do. Okay. And paper cranes. Jeez. All right, all right. This and pieces of class schedule for mathematics. Well, I'll see what I can get to. I'll write down times as I find things, and we'll just kind of go from there. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so I did find. So I've been tracking items down, but the janitor's been a pain. I've been at this for thirty minutes. So there's like a like a 25 minute skip between when I started recording and now. So I think I'm just going to you know, like let you guys know where I found things that I'm finding. This one's important though because uh, it's a newspaper scrap. So I found another thing that I probably need to read to you guys because uh, it looks like an accident report. So 
On March 15th, around 9.50 p.m., there was a fire in the home economics room at Y High School in Seoul, killing one female student. The fire damaged hundreds of dollars worth of property, caused little structural damage. This was only a small fire that was put out in a matter of minutes. The accident happened right after the end of night classes, so most students were out of the building, but one student was killed while waiting for her mother. She was suffering from asthma, and the police believe that she died from an asthma attack triggered by, a sudden, by the sudden fire. The authorities are investigating further to determine her exact cause of death. So, the mom that doesn't like and that I just dealt with, and I think, I think we know who we're talking about with this newspaper scrap. So this one's kind of important, because I didn't expect to find this here, and I don't know how I missed it the first time. So, I'm glad I've, I've found it. Um... It makes sense why she doesn't look burnt up and all that jazz. She died from an asthma attack. Who is this she? Well, I've already mentioned, but if you are if you didn't watch the last one, and I don't know if I mentioned it already in this one, then maybe you don't want to know until actually the game is beaten and maybe all questions are answered. But I think I know exactly who this is talking about, who the mom is, and what other things it's related to. So I'm going to keep at it, looking for items. I'll be right back at it with more stuffs soon. Give me a few minutes. For you, a jump cut. So, wow. Gosh, I've been walking around a while. Uh, another, like, 30 minute skip of, like, searching and grabbing things. And I've gotten all of the weights now. I found them. I'm looking for keys to the, the freaking um, typewriter also. Um, I think that's all I found. And now that I'm looking at things, uh, it looks like I'm missing things like you can tell where the keys are. Uh, I'm missing N and M. I, I think I picked up one of those in one of these times I've done this. And that I, you know, in doing that, uh, d d didn't save it and whatnot. So, I think things are in sets of five. Because I'm looking at what I've got now. And I've got... One, five, ten, thirty, and fifty gram weights. Um, I need, and the keys are in a set of five. Um, and there are five days in a week for a math class schedule. So I'm trying to look through the classrooms to see where I can put a math class schedule. Um, but I found a ghost story, uh, on the first floor, right behind the water cooler. Um, Right when you started up the game, it should have been the first one I found. So I'm going to read it now because now I found it. So cool. Uh, the Secret of the Pond. A long time ago, there used to be a small pond between the main building and the auditorium. They say that the pond was created by a bomb during the war. And it had been obliterated. Uh, bl uh, and it had obliterated a refugee ch tent that had been pit pitched there. Wow. Obviously, every refugee in the tent died. It was said that the bottom of the bl bl pond was tainted red with their blood. There's another story about the pond as well. If you write your crush asking them to come to the pond and they show up, you'll live happily ever after with them. A warning, though. If, th if your crush doesn't show up, then you will die by the pond's curse. Day Song, a quiet and st shy student, had a crush on an older student named Chen Yol. Her crush deepened and she couldn't deal with her longing anymore. She finally decided to write a letter to Chan Yol and wait at the pond. But her letter never made it to him. The letter passed through many hands, but somewhere down the line it got lost. Day Som had no idea that her letter was never delivered, and it waited for him all night at the pond's edge. The cold night spent by the pond caused her to come down with a serious fever, and she had to miss school for quite some time. After Daesom narrowly recovered, she returned to school and was even quieter and more timid than before. Her friends tried as much as they could to console her, but she ended up transferring to a different school. It was only a few days later that her body was found floating in the pond. It is said that on a night with a warm moon, a ghost appears who silently looks from in from outside the building. Um... Okay... They say that the water-bloated ghost, with eyes gleaming wildly underneath dripping wet hair, searches for the boy who has her letter. Okay. 
And here's where I am where I got that. I'm going to continue on my search to find everything. So I'll be right back with you guys again later sometime. Oh my god. Okay. This is another time that I write down a timestamp. We're at an hour eight exactly. Holy smokes. Here's what I got. I don't know how much I can do of this without a guide myself. Like, so far, what I've got, like three minutes, another two, another two. I'm barely making a 10 minute episode out of an hour 10 going on now. Um, what have I got here? I've got a combined key. So I went and finally went back to the machine where you could combine keys. I made the first two that came up, red and yellow. Then I started thinking, what can I open with red and yellow? Well, didn't seem like anything. Started walking around the whole building, trying to find places where I thought maybe I could use a key. But then the boxes showed up. So one of the boxes I passed by didn't show a key. I thought it was gonna be the desk. I, I like, Excuse me, I thought it was going to be the desk that it was going to be able to open. Because I have no idea what key opens those. But, um... This one opens the boxes, so now I've got a box now. I can open it. And I get a Morse code chart. A chart showing how to res represent numbers in Morse code. Oh no, really? That's... My achievement is... Say something on the back. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Really? Okay. My achievement is something I already knew how to do. I already figured it out. There's a code for the music appreciation room as Morse code. I gotta find the pendulum. I don't care about the Morse code chart. I gotta find the pendulum, which is the metronome, so. I'm going to go make another combination and see if it opens up another one of these guys. Holy smokes, is this game tedious to try to find all the things in it. I'll be back again. Okay, okay, okay. I found the next one. I found the next one. This is a new key. This is blue and red together. Oh, come on. I found a fourth small key. Son of a... I figured I was about to be finished with them. I couldn't find anything. The... No, of course, there were more to unlock. Of course, that's how they made more combinations. Why wouldn't I think they'd make more combinations like that? I'm losing my sanity. Yeah. We're an hour 30 in. Ooh! All right, it's right outside, but I'm gonna have to grab it and go. So this is the yellow and black key. Ooh, the wailing from the art room. Okay, get no, gotta read it though in here. All right, there's an issue. The the, the janitor's near me. Ah, oh, happy days. This one was close to the thing. So I don't know what key I'm gonna. Why am I worrying about the key yet? I haven't even read the document yet. So. Another ghost story. Did I mark that one down? 11, 22, uh, something. Um, so, this one is The Wailing from the Art Room. Seo Hoon had a crush on the new art teacher at Y High School. The art teacher was young and talented, and Seo Hoon wasn't the only goal girl who fell for him. Is this the same art teacher? Des desperate to become his favorite student, she gave her all in the art class. Wait, there's a lot of art teachers that have been in and out. Never mind. She had always been gifted. It says in the in-between scenes that the position is vacant now, but it kind of is a rotating door. She had always been gifted with her hands since she was a child. And soon she did become his star pupil with her hands. Seeing Seo Hoon's talent, the art teacher advised her to apply for an art college. Seo Hoon ex accepted his, his advice and began to take private lessons with him. This was a dream come true for her, to be left alone in school with her crush, spending hours together practicing art. At some point, a strange rumor started, the rumor come out, circulating throughout the school. 
The rumor was that the teach uh, that there was a teacher dating a student. The rumor made its way onto the ear of the school administration, and soon the young art teacher left without warning, as if he was banished from the school. The rumor was never confirmed. The rumor is out of standardized of hoax. In the middle of the night, with her favorite teacher gone, Xiao Hoon sat alone in the art room. The faint moonlight through the window rested on her shaking shoulders. She was crying mournfully. In her hands, she held an unfinished clay doll of a woman. Great care had been taken in forming the clay doll's face, and it looked just like Seol Hoon. With her eyes full of resentment, she stared at the doll. The next day, the whole school was in shock. The dead body of a female student had been found. It was revealed that the girl had killed herself by overdosing on sleeping pills. Even more shocking, however, was that the dead girl was found to be pregnant. The school tried to prevent students from spreading unconfirmed rumors about this accident, but soon the whole school knew about the whole school knew, and there were all sorts of theories about the girl and who the father was. A lot of people pointed their finger at the art teacher, but it was never confirmed. Um And this was the mom looking towards it and she was pregnant. Oh, this is the baby. This is the wandering mom and the baby. Isn't it? I mean, it has to be, right? There's, I don't. Uh. Yeah, that's it. That's the baby woman. That's her! Oh, so... The, he, he, she did get pregnant from... Wait, no! She got pregnant... The rumor... No, no, no. Um... These two go together. She got pregnant from this boy from the ownerless diary. I will give birth to this baby no matter what. I'm thankful the new life inside me. I will keep it even if I have to die. I can't stop looking at the cover of the art book. It's a picture of a clay doll of a woman and her baby holding hands. I think those two are it. Maybe? Vibrations felt like an earthquake. The, yeah, this one is it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not finished with the story. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't finish reading it. After the incident, people began to report that they could hear a baby's cry near the art room. At first, the crying was so faint that people merely thought that they were hearing things. But as time went on, it became so loud that the vibrations felt like an earthquake. Yep, that would have confirmed it for me. A baby's ghost, with its umbilical cord wrapped tightly around its neck, was also reported as appearing. Even to this day, they say you can see a baby's ghost in search of something during shadowy moonlit nights. It is imperative, you must remember, not to follow it. For, should you fail to find what the baby wants, it might drag you down into the deep darkness instead. That baby got nothing on me, and that drink it dragging me nowhere. All right, moving on. I can't take much more of this. This is very, very long and drawn out without having a guide of where to find these things. I can't, I, it's early in the morning. So I'm going to try to find, what, what's on my, okay. So I'm gonna go back to the spider. I'm gonna try to find, I, I haven't checked upstairs yet to try, see if I can put the mathematics thing somewhere. Because I'm getting from places, but one I got off a board. So I'm assuming the schedule goes on the calendars that are in each room. I'm missing a letter from the keyboard. I might give up on it. I might. And these keys with the dark one now, there's a bajillion, and there's the teacher's freaking... <sighs> the the lockbox in the new building. Forgot about that. I've got that on the list, too. 
Let's get at it, shall we? What is that? Yeah! Whoa, what's the time? Yeah, I'm writing that down. Yes. Okay. I was waiting to go to the box outside because the janitor found me again and decided to search this room and looky. I think I found this one before because I thought I missed something. How do I get it now? That is the last key I think I need for the typewriter. Oh, come on. Get it. Please let me have this. This is mine. This is my reward for doing this. Yes. 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 All right. Now I got to stop by the typewriter. So I, 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 I think the type... Writer, I think that's in the second building. I gotta find these things again. So I gotta find the typewriter. Um, but that's not the only thing that's here. So after... Now that I've got that. Hopefully he's run away. Because uh, I just searched this place pretty thoroughly. Uh, I'm still confused about all these times where there's a key and I can't get into them. Um, we have another little thing to do. Where was it? Where did you go? There you are. I saw your icon was the right color. Yeah, this is blue and black. Blue and black. Oh, a paper crane. I've got four of them. Okay. So I've got four. Hey, where did this- where did this place ever lead to? Did this hall ever go anywhere? Did I... Did I just have a... The long and winding road over here that just never leads to your door? Like, I, I never came back to check on it again. The door to- oh, that's to the auditorium. No, I should get out of here. I have another way to the auditorium. In the way I'm going in the game. Like where I'm supposed to be going. Okay. So I'm going to start checking the upstairs classrooms. And I'll get back to you guys on, on that of finding the upstairs stuff. It's the... Daggummit. Yeah, I'll definitely get back to you now that I've alerted him. So hold on. Okay. Oh, the work! Oh, we're at about two hours in. Actually, I'm gonna write that down as, uh... An hour 54. Nah, that'll work. Um, I found it. It's the last classroom up here. Two, seven. And there are five spots. I'm gonna make that radio sound go away. What I'm gonna do is go down toward the radio sound and it goes away. I turn on the light for once to do one of these. And then I am going to place them. Look at that. Something fell down. Document. A new gross story. Yay! An incorrectly solved math problem. Nahai. Nahai. A junior year student at Y High School was his top student. Smart and outgoing, she was especially adored by her homeroom teacher. Perhaps that was why she was always full of herself. When the teacher wasn't around, she would act snotty, and as if she was better than everyone else in her class. None of her classmates liked her. Everyone avoided her, but Nahai could not care less. What does it matter what they say or think about me? They're all losers, Nahai thought to herself. Nahai was prideful and had a large ego. Then one cool autumn day, the subject for fifth period was math, the subject that the homeroom teacher taught. It was right after lunch, and with the cool breeze coming through the window, most students were nodding off during the lesson. To wake up the class, the irritated teacher called a few students to the board to solve some math problems. Nahai was one of the students who was called up. One by one, students returned to their seat after solving their problem. Since the problems were easing, no one was, got them wrong, except Nahai. She had read the question wrong and incorrectly solved the problem. This was unheard of considering her skill in math. In front of the whole class, the teacher rebuked Nahai, saying that it was a stupid mistake. The teacher intended for Nahai to remember the embarrassment and never make the same mistake again. Nahai could not lift her head out of shame. 
Her face turned bright red. The kids could, could not stop snickering. The fact that the teacher's pet was being scolded right in front of them was fun and satisfying. When the teacher left at the end of the lesson, all the kids started talking about what had just happened to Nahai. They sounded excited that she finally had something to hold over. Nahai was angry. She blamed the teacher who embarrassed her in front of her class. She hated her classmates, who took it as an opportunity to talk behind her back even more. And she was angry at herself for getting the stupid cr question wrong. Even when she went home after sc school, she could not get it out of her mind. She hated her eyes for reading the question wrong. It's not my fault, she decided. She rationalized to herself that the problem was not hers, but her eyes. Soon, a terrible sound was heard and the workbook on her desk was splattered with red. I have that workbook. The next day, Nahai's classmates trembled with fear when it was announced that Nahai had committed suicide by digging her own eyes out with a knife. After this happened, a rumor spread that whenever a math problem is left on the chalkboard, Nahai's ghost is summoned. It is said that the ghost would stare at the problem on the chalkboard, but her eye sockets would be empty holes. Well. Um. When someone in the comments a long while ago said, uh, you only get ghosts sometimes when, uh, it's on a harder difficulty, they must be talking about this as one of them. Because... That would explain two items I have that I can't use. Right next to each other. Bloody workbook, a math workbook with bloody marks, and chalk used to w write on a chalkboard. I have no idea what these are used for, and I've tried to use them everywhere. Unless they're in the new area. No, this is not the new area. This is the math workbook that we just talked about. Uh, but the chalk, I'm assuming, goes right there with it. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to figure that out. I think I might try to figure out the paper crane thing, too. I've only got... If the five thing is right, I've only got one missing. So that puts that, this, the only other one that I might not get to is the pins. If I get lucky and find the pins after searching the other building. Maybe. Maybe. I got a little bit more searching to do. I, but my, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. We're at two hours. I'm losing it. So I think I'm going to move on to the second building. And then what, what do I have that I found? So I got to get to the typewriter. I got the, uh, where the, uh, the spider would need to be weighed, the code for the principal's, uh, safe, um, and if I can find a damn metronome, uh, the Morse code, uh, that's supposed to be for the metronome. Because that's what everything points toward. So, metronome from Morse code equals music supply room. Right? Right. Holy crap. All right, keep going. Oh, okay. We are at the typewriter where I will place the hard fought keys. Uh, okay, document. Rumors, dying message. Nobody recognizes me. How much I care and love my students. I only meant for the kids to grow up good and polite, but they only complain uh, how harsh I am without thinking about how I feel. But I can endure this. Someday the students will see me differently. Yes, that has to happen. There was a junior year kid who died while sneaking out from dor dorm during my watch. I am so terrifying that the kids would take such an extraordinary route. It's not like I'm raising them. Lately, I have been doubting myself, slowly convinced that maybe I am in the wrong. But where did I begin to go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Uh, I just heard the rumors today. It was about a kid who recently died. The rumor said maybe I killed the kid myself. I was so bewildered and angry that I could not say anything. Something snapped inside me. My true intention will never make its way to them. I am sick of everything. The quieter I get, the louder they buzz like a swarm of disgusting flies. They keep buzzing near in my ear. No one is going to save me but myself. I gain nothing from holding back. I cannot hold it anymore. Today, I will make an example out of someone. They will never be nosy again. This is war. A war that will not end until one of us is gone. 
Okay. I got that. Cool. I shall continue on now. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. Okay, wait. Hold on. There is a message in here. Dying message. Okay, this... So, dying message came from a note uh, where... Um... materials something about dying messages is it here mm. a dying message refers to the last uh, logically mystery as uh, lack practicality um, uh, among these rumors that uh, dying messages uh, uh, a house mother killed herself and left a dying message. That dying message is supposedly hidden somewhere in the school. Apparently the message has the passcode that can unlock the key box in the student department office. Since no one has ever uh, seen this dying message, it cannot be confirmed. BAM! Got it! I am right. I went back and looked at this damn note. And... Like, that was a lot of work to just get a note. But it's titled Dying Message, and I got the other thing that said about dying messages. I for, I, I, like, I barely remembered that. Look at this. The capitalized letters. The F, O, U, R. That's the number four. I'm about to decode this bitch. We are getting a key code for this room. I'm doing it. I'm going to skip to me actually opening that thing because I'm not going to make you guys sit here while I try to figure this out. So, hold on. All right, here we have it, ladies and folks. Um, ladies and folks, ladies and gents, I am getting tired because we are getting way into this. This is a timestamp of two hours and 20 minutes for this recording of trying to... F oh, God, I've got to get to sleep soon. And sleep, sleep ain't coming, bro. So, we're in here exactly where the box is and each page of the dying message had capitalized letters each page was a different number so the caps said that it should be four six two five let's do this four six two five thank god that was small master key small master key Woo! i have the key that can open drawers Cool. I am, but I'm 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 convinced with one drawer, and then I will. I will concern myself with all other drawers a little later here. I'm not worried about all the drawers. I'm worried about all the drawers in here, but I'm worried about all the drawers actually somewhere else. Um, I'll open them as I go. We'll see if anything comes of it. There are a lot of drawers in this game. A lot of drawers. Can I emphasize the number of drawers in this game? Because there's a lot. And I have a key for it now. I'm not going to go too far away from that typewriter, though. Let's go back over there. And see if this works with any of those. If there's a key, and that was where her dying message was, her, her hidden message, then this key, for sure works in here. I just gotta find out where. So one of these drawers, probably the one with the typewriter. BAM! New go- It's number one! Ghost of a house parent. Oh! Alright, so we read her backstory already. Let's get the front story. Ghost of a house parent. 
At the time of its establishment, Y High School was in the middle of nowhere, at the base of the mountain, with hardly any human traffic. Due to this reason, Y High School had dormitories for the students. In the female dorm, there was a notorious house mother, Miss C, whom everyone was afraid of. Coming from a good family background, she had demanded that the students behaved and follow rules at all times. She would give harsh punishments for any violations of the rules, and this caused many students to complain about her. It was a little after the midterm, when a junior fell out of a third floor window and died. She was trying to sneak out of her dorms while evading the house mother's watch to go out and celebrate the end of the midterms. But for some reason, the rumor spread that the girl committed suicide because of Miss C, or even worse, that Miss C had killed, killed the girl herself. Miss C was in great shock, and for a while she stayed silent, as if her spirit was broken. The students were happy about this change and secretly kept an eye on Miss C to see if she would return to her old self. Then came the incident that riled up all of the students. Missy was doing her rounds and found a student whose hair was longer than regulation. Missy took the student to the bathroom and cut the girl's hair. But when that happened, the student and all of her friends surrounded Missy and protested against her harsh punishment and strict rules. At first, it was only a few students who spoke up. Then, one by one, they were joined by, another angry, uh, by other angry voices opposing Missy. And soon enough, and soon enough, every student in the female dorm started protesting against her. Anywhere Miss C looked, an angry glare met her gaze. Finally, Miss C broke under all the pressure and her own pent-up emotions. She ran out of the dorms, screaming like a madwoman. None of the students cared. No one went after her, trying to calm her down. In the end, Miss C's body was found on a nearby mountain a few days after she went missing. Since then, people started reporting that they've seen the ghost of Miss C. The rumor spread quickly, and the girls in the dormitory suffered from insomnia and fear. And eventually, the dorm had to be shut down. Even so, there are still sporadic reports of sightings of Miss C's ghost. I don't even know how to find her ghost. Sporadic sightings? I can't go to a mountain? It's the girls' dormitories. Where were the girls' dormitories? I mean, is that a... Is that a place? Like, are, is the auditorium where where I don't I don't know. I don't know where to find half of these ghosts that I'm finding the stories for, and I'm fearing that my efforts might be in vain this time through. As maybe I do have to be in hard mode to find most of the ghosts that I'm looking for that I've got the stories for. But I'm gonna continue on because I have that one. Uh, I've, I'm, I've got another quick sweep of places I did not look in this building before we move on to the main building or the new building uh, But here's my biggie. We've got the music room and the music supplies room that I have to go check to see if I can find a metronome So I gotta go check that I'm gonna find, try to find we've got paper cranes and tacks on the way I have tried starting to write them down. I don't know whatever happened to that system because that system failed so I'll try to, to tell you guys, otherwise you guys are just going to have to look up where to find them because I, I'm trying here, I'm trying, but it's, it's late. I mean, you know, it's not too late, it's never too late, but it's, it's late, it's late, so let's keep going. Oh my god, I've... Don't be the janitor. Please say you're usable. Please say I can do something. Please, please, I need this. Oh, come on. I found a metronome. Is that on it? Come on. Wait, no, 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 it is. Okay, crap. It, it is, it's, it's long and short. It was very long and very short. That was, okay. That was hard for me to do my dot dashes on that one. Let's do it again. Let's do it again because I found a freaking metronome.
Um, there were 21 in that. I'm gonna record that. That was not cool. Was the 21st just ending it off? The 21st might have just been ending it off. So I'm uh I'm I'm not gonna take chances though. I'm not having to get run all the way back up here. So let's uh go ahead and do this one more time. Let that just play through. While it's playing through, that janitor better not find me while I'm just standing here. That should be eight, um, four, um, ooh. The third number makes no sense if I don't just do like, uh, move them all up a notch. Oh, you can't- You can't do that in the middle of while I'm recording this. Alright, well, screw you. Okay. So, so... It doesn't make sense. Not the way I wrote it down. I wrote two, uh, three dashes to start with. I don't think it's three dashes. I think that first is, like, the winding to get it to one side. So, if I move everything back one... It's actually... So, this is dash, dash, dot, 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 uh, dot, 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 dash, dash. Because, yeah, because it can't, you can't have dash, dot, dash, dash, dash. So, it's dot, dash, 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 dot, dot. All right, that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, you have to have consecutive. So, this is seven, uh, three, one, um, eight. Seven, three, one, eight. All right. So, I've got for the music supply room now. Oh, got the metronome from the music supply room. So, that's music appreciation. So I've got 7318 to put over there. So now I've got in the new building the spider, the principal safe, the music appreciation, uh, the cranes. Um, now all I've got left is if I can find, I found one more pin. Um, so I don't know the number because now that I looked at uh, how many keys I needed, it was four, not five. So my assumption that it's like in groups of five is now kind of just based on the mathematics schedule. Um, and the cranes don't, don't even make quite sense because I remember there's three on there. I only have five. It makes one crane missing unless it is a puzzle on there that I'm supposed to figure out which space is supposed to be missing, which is going to be a pain in the butt. But the weights even make sense that they're kind of in a group of five. I'm not going to give up on the idea of five. So I'm going to try to find one more pin on my way out. But if I don't find it, I don't find it, and hopefully I get the ghost or the story or whatever anyway. But we'll see, because this is arduous, to say the least. Let's keep going. I am praying that this janitor is still gone, because I have five spots to hit. I do not know if one of them, will, actually two of them will work, but this one better sure as hell work. So, I have to weigh the spider. Ooh. Getting down to the nitty gritty on this one. Um, believe that is the weight of the spider? Did I not weigh the spider? Did not weigh the spider. All right. 
All right, there we go. Something fell down. Document. Another ghost story. All right, get ready for some ghost stories, kids, because I think that's what I just lined up for this in now heading on three hours of tracking things down before we actually move on to the auditorium. So, ghost story, kid in the corner. So he had always been terrified of bugs ever since she was young. She especially found spiders the most repulsive of all. Yeah, spider girl story! Hell yeah. Her school, why, young, why high school, was an old building that was built out of the base of a mountain. So naturally, there were lots of bugs and spiders. She was always very stressed because of this. That's why she was so happy to begin her senior year. Unlike the first two years of her high school, her classrooms this year were located in the new building. Since it's new, she expected there would be no bugs and that she would be able to attend her classes carefree. On the first day, there was a strange girl in her class. This girl gave her the creeps because her long hair covered most of her face. So he could not recall ever seeing her at the school before. The weird girl's face was so unfamiliar that it made her doubt if she was really a student at her school. She always sat in the corner, away from others, and hardly ever moved. She wouldn't even get up during breaks or lunchtime. For some reason, so he couldn't help but be bothered by her. One hot summer day, unable to concentrate in class, so he snuck a glance at the weird girl. What she saw completely shocked her. The girl was chewing on a moth. Startled, so he turned to look at the bug-eating girl again, but this time she saw nothing out of the ordinary. So he thought she must have been seeing things because of the blazing hot day. Then, the girl sent Sohi a knowing smirk. It creeped her out so much that she became terrified of her. After that, the creepy girl stopped coming to school. So he was bothered by her sudden disappearance at first, but as time passed in peace, she forgot about her. One day, while on her way home, so he realized that she left something at school, so she went back to get it. Just moments before the school was filled with sounds of the students leaving, but now it was quiet as the grave. So he entered the classroom and turned on the light. There was nothing but empty desks and chairs inside, just as it should be. So he went to her desk to retrieve what she had forgot, where she spotted something black swaying in the back of the classroom out of the corner of her eye. So he squinted her eyes, taking a closer look at what, she, at what was hanging. When she realized what she was looking at, she froze in terror. She was slowly ra she sh as she slowly raised her eyes, she could follow the long curtain of black hair up to the body of the creepy girl who had disappeared. The girl was clinging to the ceiling, her limbs twisted at inhuman angles. She looked like a spider perched in its web, preparing to pounce on its prey. Spotting Sohi, the spider girl scuttled quickly across the ceiling toward the petrified Sohi. The girl's long black hair shot out like a spider web, wrapping around Sohi and pulling her up. The lights flickered twice, and the classroom went dark. One long, terrified echoed, uh, scream echoed throughout the halls before it was abruptly cut off. No one ever saw Sohi again after that day. The spider that used to hang in the corner of the classroom was missing too. Did it say there was a spider hanging in the corner of the classroom? Um, wow, she noticed just a, it wasn't a, okay, I got her story down, wow, that's kind of cool, actually that's kind of creepy also, I'm gonna run with the fire of a thousand suns behind me every place I go until I'm proven that that other janitor is still here. They dropped dead, I thought. I thought they were gone. I should hear his whistling, right? Alright, this is the one that's difficult for me to know exactly what I'm supposed to do. So, there are... Six places. I'm gonna just start placing them. Okay. So, that's wrong. So... Let's do it again. So, I left the top corner. I'll, leave the, I'll go the other way. Can I pick these up? Uh oh. Oh crap. Uh oh. Wait a second. Okay. How 
have no idea the order. There we go! Yeah, there's only so many combinations to that, isn't there? Extreme Dieting Death Young Mi was a senior high school student, and she had never been happy with her body. She was excited to become a university student with only the entrance exam standing in her way, but regretted that she wouldn't have to, uh, wouldn't get to have any campus romance with her kind of body. So, she would always say that she was on a diet. The strange thing was that she didn't look overweight to others. The people around her would tease her that she, would actually, uh, that she should actually gain a few pounds. Still, yet yeah, this is body dysmorphic disorder, right? Still, young me doubted their words. When she looked in the mirror at the back of the classroom, she only saw an overweight girl. Look at what a pig I am. How could they call me thin? How could they say I could gain a few pounds? The only conclusion that young me could come to was that they were being sarcastic. Just you wait. I will become thin. I'll not eat anything until I am thin. It's called anorexia. From that day, young me didn't eat anything and would only drink water. She became thinner by the day until she was to the point where she was just skin and bones. She barely had, e had the energy to even move, but she continued her refusal to eat. When she was forced to eat even just a little, she would run straight to the bathroom and throw up. She had lost so much weight that watching her walk around the school was a creepy sight. Her friends and teachers, who at first had been worried, began to avoid her. Then one day, a new boy transferred to her class. Wanting to make quick friends, he treated the whole class to pizza and burgers. With the teacher's permission, they served the food in the classroom and held a party. Everyone was able to enjoy the food while relaxing and letting go of their stress of preparing for college entrance exams. The transfer students spotted young me sitting by herself in the window. Even in this celebratory mood, she was not eating. The thought never occurred to him that she was on a diet. He just figured that she didn't get her share yet. He just figured that she didn't get her share yet. So he brought her one of the remaining burgers and a soda. No! I'm not eating! I won't eat anything! I'm still fat in the mirror, can't you see? Young Mi stood up and shouted with rage as she pointed at the mirror at the back of the classroom. Suddenly, the classroom went quiet. Her face was contorted with anger, and her eyes gleamed with insanity. Young Mi started snickering and looked around. All the kids' eyes were locked on honor and fear. To her, it seemed like they were all st uh, staring with eyes filled with disdain. Young Mi stormed out of the classroom screaming. Nobody moved to stop her. In the end, she was found dead in the mountain nearby. Everyone's found dead in the mountain, having starved to death. Her classmates tried to figure out what Young Mi meant with her last words. What did she mean by mirror? We don't have a mirror in our classroom. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that one's actually creepy. Okay, there's a few in here that are a bit creepy. That one kind of creeped me out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I feel a bit itchy after that one. I don't. I'm not sure I appreciated that one the way I should appreciate that one. Oh God, that one's not okay. I'm sure there's another way you're supposed to figure out the arrangement, or you're supposed to leave the center empty. I don't know. I don't like that story. Um. Music appreciation is right around the corner for me. Oh, jeez, that was not cool. Okay, that was it was a good story, but I mean, oh boy. Okay, yeah, there's a dead woman on the floor. I should be good, golden. So, here we have another problem, and I believe the solution is not cowbell, but seven three one eight. Bam. Another document. Lost face. I hope this is the girl that was in here because she wouldn't let her face be seen until she scared the crap out of me. Ooh, Una. 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 Una? Una. I'm gonna call her Una. Um, Una was a popular girl. Not only was she pretty, she was musically talented as well, winning many awards since she was young. Everyone loved her. As often, happy, uh, as often happens in these cases, everyone wanted to be friends with her, and she became uh, egotistical. In contrast, me shook. Wow. Una had me shook. In contrast, me shook was hardly known by anyone in school. She thought she was ugly. That caused her to have self-confidence issues, making her timid and introverted. Do of this. She had no friends to speak of. Even her classmates hardly acknowledged her existence. 
One day, Una was walking in the hallway while nosily chatting with her friends. Me shook, focused on cleaning, didn't realize anyone was there until Una ran into her. Me shook, stumbled, and dropped the uh, mop bucket she was carrying, spilling dirty water all over the hallway. Una never said sorry. She barely spared a glance at Mishuk and then walked away silently. Angered, Mishuk went after her and demanded an apology. Instead, she was mocked. What are you blubbering about? You're as ugly and dirty as a mop water. <laughs> the other kids snickered in agreement with Una's cruel remarks. Mishuk's face turned red with embarrassment and anger. From that day on, she was an easy target for bullying. Every time she walked by, everyone would mock her without caring if she could hear. As time passed on, her resentment toward Una grew to hatred for Una. She decided that she would get revenge on Una for what she had started. How pretty does she think she is? Does she think that beauty lasts forever? We'll see about that. One day, Una was chatting away with her friends in the music appreciation room. Mishuk quietly approached them and, as usual, the kids began mocking her. No one paid any attention to the bottle she held in her hand. Uh-oh. Mishuk took, uh, Mishuk took cap off the sulfuric acid she brought and threw it at Una's face. Una's screams of pain filled up the room and echoed through the halls. The kids around her scrambled away in horror. Not one soul stayed behind to help Una. Una pleaded for help as she screamed in agony, but Mishuk just smiled cruelly and watched her beg. Una's pretty face was eaten away by the acid. She was fortunate to, to have survived the attack, but it left her with a hideous scar covering half of her face. There was no trace of her former beauty to be found. After that incident, she would not go to school, refusing to even come to, out of her house. She broke all the mirrors inside, and her disfigured eyes began uh, being sensitive to light caused her to keep the house eternally dark. Her depression became so deep that one day it drove her to leap from the roof of the house. They said that it was hard to identify her body because she struck the ground face first, completely destroying what had remained. Since her death, there are rumors of sightings of Una's ghost at the music appreciation room. It is said her ghost always has her back turned, and that you'll die if you ever see her face. Well, I died a few times trying to see her face. I mean, I didn't mean to see her face. I didn't want to see her face. I saw her face trying to beat her. That was a pain in the butt. Music appreciation taken care of. We've got the principal safe and the resource center. We'll take care of the principal safe because it's down here. Chairman's office. I said principal safe over and over and over, and it's the chairman's office. Great. That's what I like from giving you guys that grade A quality content. Getting the name constantly wrong. Um, let's see, the c characters I have for this are a 2. Um, what looked like a C. Okay, a butterfly. And the character for, how do I spell my name in Korean? Uh, no, I don't know that character. I thought it was the character that stood for the first syllable in my name, but... There we go. Document. The Impassable Bridge. Wow, we got a lot of documents here, folks. We're, we're booking on through them. Although it was early in the morning, the whole school was filled with an uneasy buzz. Cloman. Cl... Cleoman. Cleoman. Cleo. Cle. Cle I want to say the L2. Chiol. Chiolman. Chiolman. We'll go with that. Chiolman, a student, was found unconscious in the hallway. This particular hallway was the passageway between the main building and the new building, and it was rarely used. It was built with an interesting design that puzzled all those who set eyes on it. Its purpose was to bridge that uh, was to be a bridge that connects one building to another, but it was shaped like a tunnel with fluorescent light, but not one window. This made it seem creepy even during daytime. What's more, getting to the other building wasn't a straight path, but instead twisted and turned. All of that combined made fewer and fewer students use the walkway, and the less that people used it, the more creepy the rumors became about it. One rumor said 
that while walking down the passageway, which felt like walking into a cave, there were sounds of footsteps either behind you or coming from the front. Either way, you'd never see anyone there. Another rumor said that if you enter the hallway in the middle of the night, you will never get out to the other building, but instead get lost in a labyrinth of corridors until the break of dawn. That's what happened to me. I know what hallway you're talking about. I don't know if I include that in the story, but before I like beat this whole little section right here and try to go back, going back had someone singing a song in your ear, scratch marks on the wall, and you never got there. So it was, yeah, a labyrinth. The night, um, um, the night before the accident took place, Chiolman told his friends that he didn't believe in such a bogus story. Being teenagers, they dared Chiolman to prove himself. So Chiolman and his friends came to the school in the middle of the night. The test Chiolman was given seemed simple. He only had to go through the passageway, get to the other building, and bring back an object from a classroom. Chiolman wasted no time beginning this easy venture and quickly opened the door to the passageway. He disappeared into the darkness, and the door shut behind him. When Chiolman was alone, he realized it was scarier than he had imagined. The passageway was without a single window, and all he could see were the small patches of light, like islands in a pitch-black sea. Chiolman shivered and began to regret making the, this bet with his friends. When the sound of his footsteps echoed loudly in the empty hallway, it felt like something from the darkness would come running out at him at any second. Chiolman gathered together what courage he had left and started walking as fast as he could. And that's when something passed by him and lightly brushed his neck, making metallic sound. His hair stood on end. He felt like something was right behind him. Was he hearing things? He thought he also heard a faint laughter. Chiolman, clenching his teeth, bravely turned around. Nothing was there except a completely empty hallway in darkness. Chiolman, who had been scared to death, was a bit relieved, until right at that moment he heard a whisper. What are you doing here? Terrified, Chiolman ran as fast as he could, screaming. It didn't matter how fast or how far he ran, he would never be able to make it to the building on the other side. At last, Chiolman suffered a panic attack and was knocked into unconsciousness. His friends, after waiting for a long time, all returned home. Everyone was worried for Chiolman, yet no one suggested going to look for him. So, that's how Chiolman was found laying unconscious in the passageway the next day. From that day on, the students have called this passageway the Impassable Bridge, or the Labyrinth. Ooh, 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 or the Labyrinth! Boop, 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 ba -ba, school notes, and a ba -da -ba, labyrinth. I was wondering why we're talking about, well, I mean... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I remember, I remember the worry. How could I ever forget it was a labyrinth? Uh, underground building, uh, okay. All paths lead to the center, and one's complicated, get lost. Okay, that's the only things about that. This school is, a uh, labyrinth, though. This is the meaning about the school, not necessarily about that. Now, that wasn't really a ghost story. What ghost really went with it? I just had scratches on a wall and something whispering in my ear. I don't really consider that necessarily a ghost story. They found him unconscious, but did they find him dead? No one will know. Now, the last one we've got is the resource center. It's on the fourth floor, and in there was the globe that had the pin ability, I guess. So, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to try to see... If we can't put some pins in there, I'm not gonna cut the camera because this is it. After this, I am going. I'm going to pass out. Actually, I'm gonna start a video editing. I'm probably be 4 a.m. before I start passing out because I'm trying for you guys. I really am. So, was it this room? I should check the map. Wow, I should check the map. Uh, reading, nope, not any of these. Cool. Checking the map was the right thing to do, and I didn't do it. All right. 
in this gun. So I'm sure there's another way to find all the places to stick pins. Uh, but the hand icon came up every time I found a place to stick a pin, so... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that. Oh, there's one. Oh, it rotates a little bit more than I thought it did. Oh wait, I can rotate that much, and then this can rotate- Canada! Our, 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 our hat? America's hat gets a pin? Gasp. Alright. Australia? Yeah, you get a pin. I had a feeling about that one. Now, China, I also had a feeling about. Didn't I find one over here? D didn't I find one? I mean, in the area, at least, or somewhere? Crap. Alright. I found one over here. I don't know. Oh, oh. Let's, let's look at Africa. Na, 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 Africa. Na, 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 waiting for you. Oh! Got it! Thank God! Oh, that's all of the things I went after I do get. Yes! Tragedy brought by jealousy. Yunju and Young He. Yunju and Young He. Okay. These names are going to be the death of me. Yunju and Young He were best friends. Being friends since childhood, they had no secrets between them. They spent so much time together that they could almost read each other's mind. When they entered high school, Yunju developed a crush on a guy a year older than her. Yunju would always prattle on and on about him to Ye Young He. Strangely, Young He's reaction to her close friend's biggest interest in life was rather icy. She would only wish for uh, she would only wish her a curt good luck. They liked the same person. I know this story without even needing to. I don't even need to read the rest of it. The one, uh, they both liked the same guy. The guy only liked one of them. That's a neat. That's a story old as time. This is like a Beauty and the Beast story. Uh, then be silent until a new subject arose. <laughs> Just go right back to the middle of the sentence like it didn't matter. She would only wish her a curt good luck, then be silent until a new subject arose. One day, Yunju heard from another friend that the guy she liked had feelings for Young He instead. It turns out that Young He and the boy went to the same church. Yunju wondered why Young He had never mentioned that. It was weird. From that point on, Yunju was suspicious of every single thing Young He said or did. Soon, they grew so far apart that they wouldn't even say hello to each other. Sometime after, Yunji found Young He and the boy sitting on a bench, innocently talking. Envy filled her eyes. That event at that evening, Yunju called Young He up on the school's rooftop. They began to argue, but Young He kept on denying Yunju's accusations. The arguing got louder and more heated, and out of anger, Yunji pushed Young He off the rooftop. Yonki fell down head first and died instantly without a sound. Yunju gave a false statement to the police. Young He's death was reported as a suicide. After some time passed, Yunju was able to go out with her crush. Wow. You are brutal. One day, she made plans with her boyfriend to go on a, uh, go on a date at school. They thought it would be a great idea to meet up in the middle of the night for the sexy time. That way they could stay out of the heat, and it seemed adventurous. Yunju arrived at the school, uh, school first and was waiting in the empty classroom. When her boyfriend didn't show up after the promised time, she began to get scared. Suddenly, thunk, thunk, thunk. She heard something echoing from the hallway. Then she could hear a door opening. Not here. It wasn't her boyfriend's voice. It was the raspy voice of a woman that sent shivers down her spine. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The noise was getting louder and closer until it was shaking the ground with every thunk. Yunju heard another door open. Not here either. Thunk, 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 thunk. The thunking was getting closer to her now. Terrified, Yunju dove under the teacher's desk to hide. She was quaking in fear. The door opened to the classroom flew open. Yunju peeked at the door through a crack under the desk. 
There was nothing to be seen. Just when Yunju thought something must be wrong, an object fell from the desk, and Yunju's eyes flew up to see what knocked it down. There you are! Yunju screamed so loud that her voice echoed throughout the whole school. Am I gonna find a girl under a desk? Um... Well then, I have found some treasures, but I think it's time for me to finish this episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This was a labor of love because it took three hours and 20 minutes. So, however long it is, it's not as long as I've been recording. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Please don't say bad things, because really, I tried hard. So, I'm going to get back at the main story in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you back there for that next part really, really soon. Bye!